Okay, here we are in part two. Uh, we've exported the character from DAS as an FBX, and now we're going to import it into 3D Exchange 5. So I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to import animation to capture the facial morphs. The smooth curve, I just leave it as the default and adjust the material color automatically. Open it up and say OK. It's going to do its processing of bringing the data in, the bone mapping, etc. You're going to get two prompts, two or three prompts here. Uh, one's going to be about the talking character Genesis face mapping, which is the first one that comes up. And you just say yes to it if you want to make it a standard talking character. You don't have to, but in this case, this is a demo for that process, so I'm going to say yes. Press enter or click on the yes. It's up to you. All files in the motion library have been updated. Please select the apply to iClone to view the updated result. Now you don't that's telling you you don't have to go any further than this. This character has already been mapped. The bones have already been set. And just say okay. And the selected model exceeds 30,000 face count, which is recommended for optimal real-time performance. You can ignore it if you want to. In this case, I'm going to ignore it and say OK. Now you could have decimated the character and brought them in a different way. But this is the basic Genesis character. I'm not going to do any of the uh, texture edits or imports. I'm just going to go ahead and link the materials out. If you hit the letter Y and you click on it, you'll see this little symbol sitting in the corner. That's telling you that the image is still linked. Now I can double click it and bring in those images, but for this purpose, we're not going to. So I hit the letter I. It's a non standard character. Root node. You're going to still have the option to convert it to a non standard character. If you hit the letter N, you have the option to do it, or you can check your facial morphs if you like down here. There are more options under this expression editor which I'll cover later. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm going to apply this to iClone. So the first thing I need to do is open up iClone. I'm going to pause just a second and bring it up. What we're going to do now is we're just going to apply this to iClone and send it out to use in iClone with facial animation as you notice the face muscles move. We're going to apply it to iClone as a basic character. No ups, no extras. And that's how hard it is to get a character into iClone with facial mapping. That is just the basics. And then you can go in here. Once you've got the character in the scene, I usually take actor, avatar, and I apply foot contact in case I'm going to give them foot motion. I'm going to keep them on the ground. Hit the letter J. We're interested in the facial area here. Now, of course, these maps for the eyes would be edited before you bring it in, or you can edit them here. It's up to you. Uh, for purposes of this demo, I'm just going to leave it as the base character when it comes in. You've got a lot of specular on the character. It's entirely up to you what your characters look like. It comes in as a root node, so you can double click that and change the name, and I'll just call it the Genesis Base Facial mapped character and press enter. F2 changes the name or double click. If you look at this character now you can take animation and prior to this if you clicked animation you didn't get facial animation. There was no option for it. Now you have it. So you can choose how you're going to do this. You can import CTS. You can record vocals you can open a file you've already recorded or you can do text to speech. If I do text to speech, which is very simple, test text to speech option. You can preview it, see what it's going to sound like. Test text to speech option. You can change the pitch. You can change the speed. And this is one that comes in. There's Michelle and there's Michael. You can try Michael and preview it. Okay. Let's 
change the pitch up a little bit. And you can also try uh, Michelle if you have these. And say, we'll go back to Michael. And say, okay. And there you go. There's the character with text to speech. Now, there's no other animation applied to it. You can do facial edits and puppeteering. That will come in a later time when I finish this basic to show you that it comes into iClone. Part three will be going in and editing some of these options for the face and doing some more puppeteering in iClone for the character that was brought in. So we took the character from Daz, we took it through 3D Exchange, we accepted the bone mapping as it came in using the animation selected option, and then we brought it directly into iClone. No edits on the character itself. By the time I get done, I'll have a fully dressed character in here operating the way it's supposed to. The next one I bring in will have clothing on it, and then after that it will be a uh, morphed character, such as a gorilla, or a nymph, or something like that. So there you go. Hopefully you understood it. Cricky out.